You know, this person once said in front of friends, he said, you know, I've never been to a nightclub before. Everyone looked at him with shock because he said, I've never been inside of a nightclub. All of a sudden, a nightclub not being in there is a shock to everyone. Another one said, you know, I've never kissed a girl before. Everyone looked at him in absolute dismay. Not only in dismay, they thought he's a loser. And now they make uh, movies about, you know, men who are losers because they can't get women and they call them wimps and they're cowards. How things have changed around. Where women have lost their absolute value, men have lost their value. And this type of behavior is considered to be noble and courageous. Allahu Akbar. You're a warrior. You're a hero. If you can serve your lusts and temptations. And then you have issues of rape and crime. And then you've got laws, especially in Western countries, that can't even solve anything. Just the other day I read in the paper about a man who was convicted in the court of law in Sweden. He was convicted of rape. You know what kind of rape? It says that the woman, she agreed to have intercourse with him. But, excuse me for the expression, he used some kind of contraception, I don't want to say its name, and the contraception broke. Based on that, she won in the court by claiming rape, even with her consent. So now their own laws can't even solve their own problems. They bring more laws that bring more problems for them. And Allah says in the Quran, والله يريد أن يتوب عليكم ويريد الذين يتبعون الشهوات أن تميلوا ميلا عظيما يريد الله أن يخفف عنكم وخلق الإنسان ضعيفا those who follow their own lusts and temptations, they want to lead you astray, away very far. Allah wants to lessen the burden off your shoulders. He doesn't want, to, want you to fall into harm. He doesn't want you to fall into predicaments where you can't climb out of. These laws in our deen are only there to protect you. They are not there to cause you harm or restrict you, ya akhi. They are there to protect you because there's so much harm out there. Allah also tells us, follow my laws because you're weak. You're weak. Pass them and follow my guidance. I'm there for you. Like what your father and mother do. To keep you away from fire, take you away from harm. They restrict you and place boundaries around you. We need boundaries from Allah, otherwise we fall into harm. And then there's AIDS and there's HIV. And there is unwanted pregnancies by girls who are only 13 years old. 13, 12. 12, 13. And what happens to the child? They put up for adoption. The child grows up without a father or mother. What oppression? What oppression? Only to repeat the same thing again and again. So there is great harm in this. And here we are, they're trying to tell you youth that doing these actions makes you a man. You want to become a man? I dare you to get married. I dare you to get married. Because to them, this is the most cowardly thing. They don't dare to get married, brothers and sisters. They don't dare to get married. I had a neighbor. She had a three-year-old daughter. But they never got married, her and her partner. In the end, they left her for another woman. Obviously, he's going to leave you for another woman. He's too afraid to be a man. He doesn't want to get married because he's too deep in his lusts. And then turns around and she says, men, they're only after their ego. Of course. Why did you take a man like that? Allah gave us conscience. Allah gave us guidance in our brains to think with. And so Allah forbids us from these things because not to bring us harm. And you know what's sad? Unfortunately, 80% of the time, majority of the time, women are the victims. Women are the victims in this situation. So you can see it's reversed now. What does the man want? The man wants to use and abuse the woman. Use and abuse the woman. And you know what? If these young girls were able to look inside and read the, the, what's in the mind of young men these days, well, I don't think any of them, any of them will even hang around as much as 10 kilometers away from a man, close to a man. They wouldn't want to. 
But the men, they like to deceive women, wicked men. They like to deceive women, wicked men, non-God fearing we're talking about. And then you get this poor woman who thinks that, ah, oh, he's my boyfriend. We're going to stroll in. This is the image she has in her head. We're going to stroll in the park. He's going to pick up a, you know, a daffodil and give it to me or a rose hand in hand together. And then we're going to wait until the sun sets and the birds chirping around us in this beautiful park. Poor thing. This is what she thinks, right? But the man is thinking about one thing and he's going to tolerate all of that until he gets to it. I'm talking about men with diseases in their heart and there are many of them today with the uh, tabloid, with, the, with, the, with all the sceneries that you have out there and all the things that are occurring. I feel very sorry for a lot of women and I feel very sorry for a lot of men who have sold their youth and sold their chastity, sold their dignity to be so cheap.